Well, hello there everyone. I'm UXW Bill, and today I'd like to share with you an interesting case of an uninterruptible power supply failure that we're going to try and diagnose. What you're looking at right here is an American Power Conversion back UPS model number NS1080. And it figures that it'd be one of the models that I actually bought brand new and thus paid real money for that would lay down and die. At random times, this thing has been engaging in the highly irritating behavior of producing a fault code F06, which basically equates to what they call a relay welding problem. Now, for those of you who are not as familiar with electrical and electronic things, relay welding is exactly what it sounds like. Basically, the contacts of a relay become permanently bonded together, and thus, no matter what the relay is being told to do by its controlling circuitry, it can't actually change state and disconnect the load. Relays fail in that way, and they also fail by way of contact pitting, and both problems come from the same place. When a relay makes or breaks, especially with a highly inductive or very high current load, there tends to be an arc that forms at the contacts. And what they do to try and offset the damage done by this, they silver plate the contacts, but even that does not result in a relay that is immune to these failures. This UPS is unfortunately just out of warranty, so there's really nothing to lose. And I thought we'd try and see today what might make it fail. This was originally supposed to be a longer video because it just so happens that the battery I put in this uh, Smart UPS 420 back in late 2013 finally laid down and died. And I did do some talking about that, but I hated the way that video turned out. So I've decided just to skip over all of that, especially since the virtue of that video was mainly talking about the fact that I got a pretty red sealed lead acid battery for it. Don't ask me why, because as you can see, no one will ever know what's in there except for me. I'm just a sucker for colorful objects. I really am. There are actually multiple subsystems within higher quality and higher end uninterruptible power supplies. Not only is there the inverter that switches in to keep your load running when the lights go out, there are also typically automatic voltage regulation stages that are provided by way of an auto transformer. That is to say, the UPS can compensate for a low line voltage or a high line voltage without having to switch to battery by simply using relays to switch in the auto transformer and compensate as needed for the lower high line voltage condition. I know for a fact that this UPS will switch to battery and come off a of battery. It works just fine in that regard. So what I'm guessing, especially since the line voltage tends to be high around here, especially during times of light load and non-peak usage, that it's switching into its automatic voltage regulation mode and it's unable to switch back. Maybe due to some other failure or perhaps actual welded relay contacts or sticky relay contacts. Of course, the relay contacts themselves might not actually be welded either. It could be that the relay itself is mechanically sticking, maybe has a partially shorted coil that serves to actuate the contacts. It's really hard to tell, but I could sit here and talk about that all day. What you really want to know is what we're going to do to try and provoke it into failing. First of all, I have a load attached to it consisting of two incandescent lamps. These are actually a larger load than this UPS has ever had hooked up to it. Normally it's powering about 90 watts worth of computer equipment. A flat panel display, a network switch, and a late model Dell computer itself. So it hasn't exactly been run hard and put away wet. I have my variable auto transformer right here also known more popularly and commonly as a variac. Basically this allows me to freely turn up the AC voltage. It can go up quite high or we can go down quite low. It has quite a range of adjustment. As you can see I've got it set to a nominal 122 volts AC right now which is well within reason here in the United States as well as other nominally 110, 120 volt countries. We're going to try forcing this thing to switch to its inverter and we're also going to try bringing in the automatic voltage regulation. I don't remember for sure if these things only boost low line voltage or if they only buck high line voltage. APC has models that do both, but this 1080 only goes in one direction and I think it's boosting low line voltage, which is not a problem I would expect to have around here 
It's also possible that this UPS has another problem because I have noticed that when I start up the computer to which it's attached, the USB connection does not return valid data. The operating system is aware that there's a UPS attached, but it has no idea of the battery level. It could be a bug in the operating system, which is Windows 8.1, or it could be a problem within the UPS. In either event, if I disconnect the USB data cable and plug it back in again, everything's fine. At least until the next time the computer is shut down and restarted. So here we go. We'll power up. And we have light. And this thing should perform a self-test here very shortly. Which it just did. And there it just came off of the self-test successfully. So like I said, that system is working normally. Let's go ahead and see what happens if we force its hand a little bit here. We'll try going with low voltage first. As best I remember, this kicks in under 108 volts AC. Maybe as far down as 103. Hasn't done anything yet. Okay, there we go. It just clicked in the auto transformer that boosts low line voltage. And it's actually indicating such on its built in liquid crystal display. So we'll try going back the other way, see if it can actually come off of the automatic voltage regulation, which it seems to have done successfully. All right, let's try high line voltage and see what that does. Okay, it just switched over to its battery. But that's really, really weird. I'd love to know what's tripping this thing up. I was never around when it would actually fail in this manner. I'd come down here and I'd hear some beeper shrilling away into the night and I'd find that the load had been powered off and this thing was displaying a very unhappy error code. So whatever's going on evidently it's non obvious and although I do have some service literature and diagrams for these I don't have anything for this particular model so that's probably going to be the end of the line as far as troubleshooting it goes. I depend on these things far too much and I have far too many of them in reserve. I actually went ahead and swapped this out with an Eaton model that I picked up at the Hamfest a number of years ago for a dollar, supposedly dead. All it ever needed was new batteries. So, I guess I'll keep an eye on this thing, keep twiddling around with it. I suppose it's possible that weak batteries are upsetting this thing. Because if memory serves, yes, I bought this sometime in late 2014. It's been in use constantly since that time, although it has been stored for a period of about six months. That's not always real good for these sealed lead acid batteries. So it could be weak batteries that are throwing it too. But I'll probably, if it continues to fault out and cause problems here in a non-critical test environment, I'll probably just go ahead and send it off to the electronics recycling because life's too short and, like I say, I've got plenty of these things to choose from in reserve. So thank you as always for watching. I certainly do appreciate it and I look forward to hearing your constructive commentary as always. And yes, I know that the washing machine has a blown tub bearing. You don't have to tell me that.